Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial to show you how to build a black hole in Cinema 4D and Redshift. Um, this is something I've been trying to figure out for a while for a project and finally figured it out. Um, this is a little bit different than any tutorials you've probably seen where you, they've built black holes with uh, toruses and all that kind of stuff. You just don't get the correct bending of light. Um, this tutorial will show you how to bend the light correctly using spheres and doing it the correct way. So it's actually very, very simple. Um, you just have to know which nodes to use in the Redshift uh, materials. Um, so basically, we're going to start out very simple. Um, just make a sphere. And we are going to scale that up to about 500. And obviously, you can do this to whatever size your scene is or whatever size you want to make this. But this is what I've landed on, and it works. We need a ton of segments in this just to make it really, really smooth. And so this, we're going to name it our grav lensing. So basically, this is what will be actually bending the light. And then we want to go ahead and duplicate this and create or sorry, name name this uh, event horizon. So basically what this will do is um, create like a little tiny band of light inside the black hole. Um, there's, you'll, you see it in a lot of uh, other renders of black holes. There's like this little band of light that's in the center. That's what the event horizon is. Um, then we need to go ahead and set this down to about five centimeters. So it's super, super tiny, but you'll see it, it works just of the way because of the way the light bends around. Um, and then we are going to create a kind of disc right now just to have uh, something to reference off of. And we're going to set the outer radius to a thousand and the inner radius to about 90, just so we have a little bit of a hole in the center and then jump this up to a hundred or something. So as far as the main setup goes, that's about it. Um, just three three things. So you have a you have the gravitational lensing, you have the event horizon, and then this is actually called the accretion disk. I think I spelled that correctly. If not, I apologize. Um, so as far as geometry goes, that's it. Uh, nothing else to it. So what we'll do first is just set up a base material for the accretion disk just to have something to reflect off of. And I'll start the render and this will just be a basic noise. Plug that into emission and then pump that to like, I don't know, five. And make this a little bit bigger just to get some detail in there. Sure, we'll call that good. Doesn't have to be anything. This will get replaced later with uh, you can replace it with whatever you want. I'm going to be using volumes and I'll show you how to do that. But this is just a reference basically for now. So we've got that. Let's just kind of reorganize this stuff. Put this into scene. All right. So we got the accretion disk. Let's do the event horizon. So let's uh, rename this accretion disk. This will be the event horizon. And we'll put that on there. And this is basically just a Fresnel plugged into emission. Nothing else. Um, this we can tweak the color of later. Um, we're not going to do that right now. Uh, let's go to emission. And we'll just set this to like five or something. And again, you're not seeing anything. But if we turn off grav lensing with a little tiny dot right in the center, that's our event horizon. So let's get to the part that actually make this all work. So this is going to be the grav lensing or gravitational lensing, just a lot of words. Um, let's go ahead and open this up. All right. So first we need to turn off everything for the diffuse, reflection, roughness, all that needs to be turned off and turn transmission all the way up to one. Obviously not what we want. Just doing some weird stuff right there. So to start this out, let's get a Fresnel. Everything is based off of Fresnels. So we've got the Fresnel and we're going to turn off index every fraction. We want to use the curve falloff instead. 
and we're going to set this to a very low number, so 0 0.015. So it looks like it just like filled the whole thing out, but trust me, this is what we need. And then we need to add in a ramp. <clears throat> and we plug no into the ramp and preview that. So we see nothing right now, no change. And we will set our points to linear, which they already are, good. And we just need to crank up the uh, black slider all the way till we start seeing a hole in the center. And usually right around 95 is, is a good good value. You can play with this depending on how you want your, your black hole to look, but 95 is where I landed on. And then, so right now, so all this is going to be pumped into the IOR um, since we're doing a bunch of refraction. And so right now, if we pump this into our reflection, IOR, put that into surface, we're still not getting what we want. It looks really weird. It's just not doing anything. So we need to add in a divide node. And this is where the magic happens. So we plug our ramp into input two. So we're dividing the ramp by whatever number we put in, plug that into IOR. Nothing changes until, look at this camera, a little bit angled, something like that. Scale that down. Then what we want to do is just start holding down Alt and dragging up. And you can start seeing that the light is starting to bend around. So playing with this is where you really shape the black hole. You can go pretty much whatever value you want. It'll start doing what it needs to do. So you can kind of get that distinctive black hole bending look right there. So I'm going to drop this down just a little bit. We're going to go about 0.5, just so it's a little bit smaller. And you can see that little tiny sliver of light on the inside. That is our event horizon. So you can see, turn it on, turn it off. You get that little tiny bit of light in there. So that's the base setup. Um, we want to go ahead and fix a couple things. So that's about it for that part. But we've got this big black section going around here, which we don't want. Um, it just cuts out. The, the accretion disk a little too much. We don't want any of that. So we're going to solve that by adding a Fresnel and then leave all that at default. And then we're going to add in a ramp again and plug the Fresnel into the ramp. And this will go into our opacity color. So we're basically just going to make the edge of this circle, um, or sphere, sorry, make, make the edge of the sphere invisible. Um, but we have to do some pretty tight values in this to be able to do this correctly. So what we want to do is invert our gradient. So we start getting that. And these need to be set to blend. So we get a sharp cutoff right there. And just from playing around, I'm going to go ahead and just move these to the values that I need. Um, so the black needs to be set to 3.3%. And the white will need to be set to 2.4. So that basically just cut out that center section and removed all that edge. So now we have proper bending with no weird artifacting or anything like that. You get a little bit down in these edges right here, but that'll basically blend itself in once you have whatever you're trying to put on the accretion disk. You really won't notice that at all. Um, so yeah, so that's the uh, very basic setup. It, I mean, took me forever to figure this out, but once I did, I kind of blew my mind on how simple this was. And we're doing this all correctly with spheres instead of toruses. Um, one thing we want to do too is go to our gravitational lensing and add in a RS object tag and we're going to want to turn off any of these. Uh, we don't want to see itself or anything like that. So we'll turn off cast reflections, visible and ref like reflections, and visible and refraction. So you can kind of see it kills off that top little bit because we don't want to see it in itself, basically. Um, so yeah, so that's the, uh, the very basic setup. And then you'll see when you rotate this, all the distortion properly bends 
around it. Um, so what we can do now is go ahead and get some stars in the background. So I'm just going to use a dome light. We're going to use Grayscale Gorilla just because it's here. Throw in some stars. Give it a second. There we go. So you can see it's hopefully you guys can see this. Um, you can see it's starting to warp. Warps those stars around the outside of it. So as you're spinning around this, you get the quick warping of the stars and just gives it a really, really cool look. And then this also works. You can change angles and all that kind of stuff. So in the next part, we're going to go ahead and build out our accretion disk. Okay, so we have our black hole. Pretty basic setup right now. Um, but we're going to push this a little bit further. And to do that, we're going to use some volumes. So what we want to do is go to our redshift material object, sorry, and our volume. And we're going to call this accretion disk emission. And just drop this into here. We can hide our old accretion disk for now. And so what we need to do is go ahead and create a new volume material and drop that onto our emission. And we'll rename this accretion disk emission. Go ahead and open that up. And in the emission channel, we want to go to, hmm, that's odd. Let me try that again. Not sure why that's not, uh, not popping up. Materials, volume, there's nothing there. Interesting. Maybe I need to add in my volume before I do that. Let's see. On there, harvest volume. Hey, there it is. Perfect. Okay, so you got to make sure you have your VDB in your volume before you can do the material for it. So, accretion disk emission, reset that to density. Let that load if it wants to. Oh, yeah. It's not going to do anything because we need to rescale this. So first of all, let's set this to points, 100, just so we can get a visual representation in the viewport. And go to coordinates. And we're just going to scale this way up. And this will be dependent on, obviously, what kind of VDB you're using or whichever one you made or whatnot. So turn off our bloom for now. So this looks like absolute trash. So what we want to do to fix that is we're going to use a color ramp and set this to a bluish color. Let's get something like that. And then what we want to do is go over to our advanced tab and we're going to adjust the min and old max and new max settings um, to basically clamp some of these volumes just so it looks a lot better. And so what I want to do is take the old max and set this to about 10. So just doing that, you already see a lot more detail coming in there. And then you want to take the new max and drop it down. And this is all be all this will all be dependent on your VDB that you're using, uh, volume densities and whatnot. So we're going to drop this down to about uh, 1. or 0. 0.12, just to get some detail in there. So just by doing that. That looks pretty cool. And if we turn on our bloom, just the bloom, just kind of get a little bit more in there. We're starting to get a decent looking black hole. But we can push this a little bit further and get some more actual volumetrics in there. So before I do that, let me rename this to accretion disk emission. Perfect. And so to do that, we're just going to duplicate this. And just to get a little bit of variation, we'll rotate this like 90 degrees or so. And we're going to call this a blackout volume. That's just what I call it. It doesn't really black anything out. It just adds a little bit more detail by blocking some of this emission with more volume. So we'll take this accretion disk emission material, duplicate that, and blackout volume. And we'll apply that to our volume. And we'll get rid of the emission channel and go ahead and put a, let's see, where is it? Blackout volume density. 
So that's obviously very thick. We do not want that. So we will go ahead and go to our advanced tab. And these can all be reset. They don't really do anything, but just to keep everything clean, we'll do that. And we're going to go ahead and move our old max up just to make this thinner and drop our new max down quite a bit to about 0.3. Good. And then we'll come back to our scatter coefficient and crank that up. Perfect. So it's looking a little bit dark. So what we can do is go to our accretion disk emission and pop that up to about three. Cool. Looks interesting, right? So what we can do to make this look a little bit brighter and better is go ahead and grab a area light. And take this, we're going to make this a sphere and drop our brightness down quite a bit. Good. Okay. And we'll color this about roughly the same color as the emissions. Perfect. All right, so we can tweak this a little bit more. Uh, cranking up our emission. Good. Maybe let's see. Let's try playing with. There we go. So you really just need to tweak these to kind of get the get the look you're going for. So that looks that looks much better. And what we can do too is scale this up a little bit more, just so it kind of extends on past. We go like 60 right there. And that is pretty much all there is to it. So what you can do too is take these and we'll throw these inside of a null. So we'll call this creation disk animation and pop these two into here just so it's rotating directly around the center. And we'll set a keyframe there. Go, I don't know, let's go all the way to 90. We'll just have it rotate. 180 degrees and set a keyframe there and we'll make sure to set these as linear that way it's constant speed rotating so now you can see that as it's spinning the volumes are properly warping around that black hole yeah you can see a very tiny sliver of light in there and that is our event horizon let's turn that off it goes away you guys hopefully can see that um, it's very, very tiny, but you can adjust the size of this to get that looking a little bit better or brighter, whatever you need to do. So that's about it. Um, if you go to your grav lensing, you can adjust the scale of your actual disc or sorry, of your lensing, um, just by adjusting your divide slider. So you can bring that in, make the whole black hole bigger, and then you'll need to tweak your other settings depending on what you do here. So if we go, if we want to make our uh, lens much bigger, we do that and then go ahead and just take these and just kind of play around with different settings just to get different looks, change colors, do whatever, add extra things to here. You can add just debris, um, particles. You can do this literally with whatever you want and it will properly bend around the black hole. So that's that's pretty much it. Add a camera. Uh, we'll do that real quick. I always try to use um, pretty high focal length just because you'd be, I mean, in space, you're shooting it from a very long ways away. So you get that little bit of compression in there. And then you can go for a little bit more stylized look by grabbing the event horizon, throw it in here, drop your um, aperture way down. I don't know, just play around with stuff, see what looks good. 0.1 gives it kind of like a, I don't know, miniature look to it or something. Who knows? Just do whatever, make it look cool. And uh, yeah, if you guys like this tutorial, um, I'd love to see what you guys make with it. So if you post it or whatever, just tag me on Instagram or wherever you post this, and I'd love to check it out. Thanks for watching, and I will see you.